What's up guys, Yale Greenfield, AKA The Live King. I'm back with another episode of the poker vlog here in Los Angeles at the Bicycle Casino. This is the casino I've been regging the most since I've been in LA for about the last two months. I'm enjoying the gameplay, I'm enjoying the food at the restaurant. By playing here more, I'm getting to know the player pool better and that allows me to hopefully have a better understanding of what my opponents are doing. We're gonna go in, try to play 510 or 51020, however the game's playing. If you're enjoying this content, please hit that like and subscribe button, would really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in a little bit. Just a little late to start recording here. We've got Jack 10 of Diamonds and Low Jack and Open 60. The button has re raised to $200. This hand's too good, seems like a clear call, so we're going to take a flop heads up out of position. Flops 887 eight, Rainbow. We check it over to the button. Button goes for a small size of 120. I think I would always call or raise if there was at least one diamond on board. But for this price, with two overs and a gut shot, I think we gotta call one. Turns no help. We check it over to the button. And now the button checks it back. River double pairs the board. So 8877 seven on board, we've got jack high here. So now we have to decide, do we wanna bluff or do we think he's just gonna call with ace high too frequently? And this time we go for a bet of $475 with our jack high. What I'm thinking here is if I had pocket nines, pocket tens, pocket jacks, which I definitely could have in sequence, I would always bet for value and I would probably bet this size. When I have a hand as bad as jack high, which is certainly gonna be one of the worst hands I ever get here with. I wanna bluff with this combo. The button looks pretty tortured here as he attempts to ponder whether or not he wants to put in the call. And he does give up his hand. So a jack high bluff gets through to start the day off. In this next hand, the hijack's open to $70. He's a player I'm very familiar with. Small blind calls. And with the action back on us, 6-5 of diamonds seems like a slam dunk call. Flops king 7-4 rainbow, so we flop an open ender and a backdoor flush draw. We check it to the preflop raiser, and he bets $100. Small blind quickly calls. I can make the argument for calling or raising here, but in this case, I call. Turn is a five of hearts, so now we've got middle pair open-ended straight draw. Small blind checks, we check. Now the hijack bets 200, and again, I said I know this guy. My read is that he's actually kind of weak here. He's kind of a pounder, bets really big when he thinks he's got the best hand. Small blind puts in the call, and with the action back on us, I could go totally kamikaze here and just try to raise, squeeze the small blind out. My read is that the hijack is weak, but the price is really good. I could fold too, I can make arguments for anything here. In this case, I call. Rivers of nine of clubs, no help to us. Now something weird happens. I accidentally check out a turn. Hijack checks, everyone somehow checks. I show down my pair. Hijack's got two queens. And the small blind rolls six three of hearts. So he turned a straight with a straight flush redraw. I talk about this sometimes that I get worried that some players play what I call backwards poker. He's got such a powerful hand he wants to pile money in with, but here he's just trapping. So I'm glad I didn't take the bait and raise on the turn because that would have been very costly. It's been about one hour since the last hand, and here we open to $60 from hijack with ace two of spades. It's gonna fold to the straddle, who I'm now calling Mr. 6-3, the guy from the last hand. He's gonna call. And since that last hand, this guy has won nearly every single pot. He's completely an enigma, but he's running over the table, running up a huge stack, and not really showing any hands. Flops eight, five, four, two spades. So we've got the straight flush draw here. If I had ace jack a spade or ace queen a spade, I would check quite frequently on this flop. But with ace two a spade, 
50. I decide to start with a CBAT bluff of $50. And the Enigma is gonna go with the punish here. He check raises to 150. We put in the call. Turns a seven, and he six makes a straight here. So our three could be dead, even if we get there. Now Mr. 6-3 goes for a $400 bet into 435. I think here this is questionable. This is where you gotta size up whether or not you think your opponent is gonna give you all the money or a lot of money if you get there. So I go ahead and call. This guy's been playing totally crazy. I think he could be bluffing. I think if we get a spade, we could win a big one. River's an ace, so we've got top pair, which seems pretty meaningless on this board. Mr. 6 is deep in the tank. This guy seems to have balls of steel. $2,100, he makes it into a pot of 1,200. And we're forced to fold. Not a ton we can do here with our single pair. Don't know if he was bluffing. The guy's just been running over the table consistently. We've moved seats and the game is now shorthanded. When the button opens to $80 and we've got pocket kings in the straddle, the button is a familiar foe from the previous two hands. It's Mr. 6-3. 350. We're gonna raise it up to $350. He's gonna call. So we're tangled up with Mr. 6-3 for the third hand in a row. Yeah. Flop comes ace high, you absolutely hate to see it in a three bet pot when you've got pocket kings. But on this board, in this sequence, I'm always gonna start with a range bet. 250. 250. So I go with 250. And he calls. Turns a nine of diamonds. And if I have pocket aces, ace king, ace queen, ace jack suited, all these hands I would three bet, big blind versus button, I'm gonna check turns. So it doesn't matter if I have kings or any of those value hands, I'm always gonna be checking. Mr. 6-3 fires off a $900 bet into 12-15. I don't think there's much we can do here. We're just gonna fold and he's gonna earn the turkey for three hands in a row. I'm reeling badly in this session right now when the hijack limps and I raise it up to $90 with two eights from cutoff. Hijack's gonna put in the call here. The thing to know about hijack is he's an LA fixture. And what he's notorious for is sitting out dealers who are unlucky. Flop comes king nine eight. So we've got bottom set, let's go. He checks it to us. I fire off a bet of $115. He's gonna put in the call here. Turns a five of hearts. So now you've got two diamonds, two hearts, a straight home, very, very draw heavy board. Hijack now leads 200. You don't need big chips, do you? I just want to make sure. Uh -huh. You know big chips, right? No. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah. yeah. Just because the rack is there. Nope. Now he's only got about 800 total. So we put out two beautiful lavender $500 chips, indicating that we're putting him all in. Very good sign when he doesn't snap call. I call. Call. Just in case. I don't think it's more, but just in case. So he does put in the call. We're going to get a river here. River brings in diamonds, but when we show our set, he mucks his hand. Get a little listen to this convo here. I played bad. I shoot raise. Yeah, I laid on per ace. I had the per ace. Yeah. Two aces? Ace. Yeah, eight ace, yeah. Hilarity ensues when the guy claims he had pocket aces, which literally makes zero sense. But knowing this guy, it's probably 100% true. We're going to try to get healthy when we pick up pocket tens under the gun. 60. And raise it up to $60. Cutoff's going to call. Action folds to the big blind. He raises to $360. Straddle folds and the action's back on us. I don't know the big blind well, but I played a couple hours with him now. He seems like a pro, he seems very aggressive, but he's very unknown to me. So two tens, a very, very strong hand here. I'm gonna put in the call. Cutoff deliberates if he wants to take a price, but he decides to get out of the way. So we're heads up with the aggressive pro. 
And the flop's king 7 4 rainbow. Big blind bet's $265. I think this is pretty standard bet size from him. And two tens is gonna be not good enough to raise, too good to fold. So I'm gonna call one and see what develops here. Turn is a three of spades. And the big blind's gonna keep the pressure on with a bet of $600. Tough spot for us. We're sometimes gonna have some backdoor spade combos that have improved. We're gonna have a lot of king, queen, ace, king. Set of sevens might be the only other good hand we have here. And I just decided to give up the two tens. This one's another three blind configuration, five, 10, 20, and the hijack opens to only $50. I've got two eights in the small blind here. Pocket aces guy from earlier makes the call on the button. And I go ahead and raise it up to 250. Hijack's gonna get out of the way, which doesn't surprise me. And the button does call. I think the decision to raise here is kind of close. I could play a call sometimes and a raise sometimes. It's really tricky playing out of the first blind. Flop's king nine seven rainbow. And we've basically whiffed this flop here. I think the flop is okay for our range in totality. 175. So I start with a bet of $175. 175. 175. Button calls. Don't really enjoy seeing that. Turns a jack of clubs. And I think this is a particularly bad card that I would be checking quite frequently. So I check. And the button checks back quickly. River's a six. I don't know how much showdown value we have, but this guy is a quirky player. I don't really want to try to make him fold. So I check again and he snap checks. And on showdown, he shows us queen jack offsuit. So pretty speculative call pre-flop by him. He flops a gut shot, turns a pair, and we lose yet another hand. Last hand of the night here, and we're looking to right the ship just a little bit. We've got two kings on the button. And a German professional opens a $60 from middle position. I've battled him in previous vlogs. 215. 215. I decide to raise it up to $215. And the German pro does call. Flops queen, queen, four, two diamonds. We do not have a diamond in our hand. He checks it over to us. 135. We go for a small bet, $135, which is something I would do with most of my range here. We're gonna have all the good hands, pocket aces, pocket kings, ace, queen, some king, queen, queen, jack, even a little queen, 10 suited. He puts in the call. Turns a three of diamonds, so a flush potentially comes in in middle position checks. Now I've got a decision. I still think given the small size on the flop and our range advantage in general here, on a three turn, even though it is a diamond, I can keep on betting, but only for a small size. 225. So I bet 225 here. Now the action's back on the German. He calls. So this is a little bit of cause for concern. I'm not sure if hands like two tens with a diamond or two nines with a diamond might continue. Rivers is six of spades, so no help. And he checks to us again. I just don't think I can bet for value anymore against this guy. He's very solid. Again, hands like two tens and two jacks might not call another bet. So I go ahead and check. He reveals eight seven of diamonds for a turned flush. And we lose another pot, but I feel like we basically lost the complete minimum here. But it's been an awful day, and now it's time to hit the showers. Okay, guys, that's it from the Bicycle Casino tonight. I'm in the uh, illustrious Bicycle Casino parking lot here. That was a textbook lesson and how to lose every single pot that you play for a day. And it's not fun. Really only had the, the one good value hand that was able to hold with that set of eights. And, and the guy said at the end that he had pocket aces, which I suppose is possible, but seems completely impossible given the way the hand played. But you never know. I mean, live poker is a, is a mysterious, mysterious world. I think I was probably a touch aggressive in a couple of spots that I maybe didn't have to take. A little stationy in a couple of, of draw spots. Could have saved a little bit of money here and there, I mean, I'll just say it, it wasn't fucking fun at all. Uh, it's kind of like just getting kicked in the face for hours on end. You know, but I think that's part of the game. Just gotta find a way to, you know, pick yourself up off the ground. One nice thing about this job is I could take a day off or I could kind of just 
get back in there. Uh, so final numbers, I got in pretty deep today. I got in for 6,000. I was out for 27.70 for a loss of 32.30. Booked an L and a decent sized one at that. Thank you as always so much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button for us. We'd really appreciate it. If you got any comments on any of the hands or anything that you'd like to see that you're not seeing in general, uh, you know, maybe sometimes the strategy stuff, it's cool to comment on that, but maybe if you got some other ideas, things you'd like to see in the vlog or just anything you want to know, let me know. Otherwise, that's it. I'm going to go home, get some rest. I will chat with you guys later. See you soon. Life King out.